Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets for Tuesday morning, the 15th of March 2016. As always, be sure to uh, check out CFDs.com, visit the website, and uh, certainly take advantage of the uh, very healthy bonus offer uh, at present, which is uh, currently 25% of your initial deposit. Alternatively, you can visit the uh, educational site, which is www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, now let's uh, try and decipher exactly what's happening with regards to the European markets this morning. Now, the Asian markets overnight was all about the BOJ. Okay, BOJ, BOJ, BOJ. And they certainly downgraded uh, their growth forecasts, which certainly put a negative spin on the commodities to a large extent. And uh, obviously, the gloomy view by the BOJ has hurt the mining stocks this morning as well. Okay, now... A drop in the shares of my major mining companies and a gloomy economic outlook from the Bank of Japan, pull FTSE lower, etc, etc. The BOJ also dropped references to taking rates further into negative territory six weeks after taking an initial radical shift into negative rates territory. Fear still lingers over central banks running out of ammunition to jumpstart the global growth by Chinese walls periodically sour risk appetite. I mean, that's periodically. Um, the period as of late hasn't exactly been very sour. But yeah, let's uh, given the fact that equity markets have rallied quite substantially. Okay, so... It's all about the BOJ uh, overnight, really. It's uh, Sainsbury's uh, certainly reports uh, stronger sales growth, legal and general stronger sales growth. Uh, Hastings full year operating profit jumps as well. Uh, oil, oil prices have obviously made new lows on the back of the BOJ, uh, although Balfour BT certainly is well bullish. BOJ, I mean, this is the main report this morning. Uh, let's just quickly shift it over. The Bank of Japan's on Tuesday will maintain its massive asset buying program at existing levels. But offered a bleaker view of the economy, suggesting it may roll out more stimulus as it struggles to reach an elusive inflation target. Okay, so initially the market obviously took that negatively, as you can see with regards to oil currently uh, trading at the $36 level. Okay, certainly took it negative. But the market certainly seems to be swinging around and uh, looks like it will expect more QE uh, overall, but not QE for now. Okay, right. So uh, in terms of uh, economic data thereafter, you've had inflation numbers out, out of France and uh, Italy. Nothing really major. Um, the RBA minutes out overnight as well, more or less neutral. Uh, okay. Um, they all try to talk their currencies down, but it doesn't really work, especially with Egypt as well. Uh, uh, Egypt's currency collapsing 13% yesterday. Okay, right. Now, now let's try and decipher exactly what's happening from a technical point of view, given the fact that the BOJ is out of the equation now and uh, the market now is, is back on focusing on oil. Now the oil price, as you can see here, currently is into support on the uh, four hour chart. Okay, certainly a pullback here and looking at potentially bouncing uh, and moving higher. And that should, in, in and of itself, should help equities move higher to a large extent as well. Also, the price of uh, Euro USD, Euro USD, as you can see here, making new lows. And that's generally considered to be bullish for uh, European equity markets. Uh, the market has failed to push higher given the fact that the... Uh, and this is quite important, by the way, folks. Uh, the ECB was, uh, uh, shall we say, hawkish for a reason. And they said that there will be no more rate hikes for a reason because they now rely on the uh, Fed to actually start, um, obviously, their rate hike cycle, which in, in and of its sense is a rate cut for the uh, European Central Bank. Okay? In and of itself is a rate cut for the European Central Bank okay so bear that in mind folks okay hence the reason why they no longer will obviously continue with their rate cutting cycle and they are continuing with their QE okay so they've obviously increased their uh, QE per month I think by an additional 20 billion and obviously they are going to uh, uh, rely on the Fed being hawkish and that in and of itself is a rate cut and that's what's going to keep the euro USD at bay and that's exactly what we're obviously witnessing at present, okay? And that should obviously be net-net positive for European equities, okay? Now, bear that in mind, I'm just going to go long on the euro stocks here as well, based on that uh, understanding, uh, given the fact that it's into a level that I need to go long at, so bear with me. Just going to send a message out to subscribers looking to go long on the euro stocks here. Okay, at uh, 30.75. Okey right. So looking for a uh, move higher on the euro stocks. Okey dokey, right. 
let's uh, continue okay so euro usd obviously still remains weak although you do have previous support equals resistance at this 1.0550 region okay but for now the euro still remains weak and the boj certainly has the opportunity or the possibility or the probability of more qe and stimulus okay uh, in terms of the euro stocks i am looking for potential gap fill to close at 3090 and then potentially start to push higher again as the euro usd certainly remains weak so that certainly is something to consider and contemplate going forward okay now in terms of the german dax let's bring up the german dax and again i'm looking for the german dax to close that gap at 9990 yesterday it totally ignored the bearish uh, report with regards to the uh, merkel losing the election uh, in key areas uh, certainly negated that altogether and therefore looking to potentially push higher okay so uh, the FTSE will remain under under pressure due to the fact that the dollar is certainly is uh, appreciating and uh, is uh, hurting the uh, the actual uh, commodity sector to a large extent i mean if you bring up a chart of copper you can see you had a, bull, a bear flag on the price of copper as well on the daily chart if i bring up a 60 minute chart for you and you can see now we are coming into potential support as we can see here okay along with copper i did explain that oil is obviously into support as well the Aussie is is potentially into support from a large perspective, from obviously a, a 60 minute chart perspective. You have diagonal trend line support. You have 200 MA support. Uh, going over to a four hour chart, you've got diagonal trend line support. So you're in this bullish channel. Okay. The daily chart is obviously consolidating within that green candle, and that is expected to hold and certainly push higher to a large extent. Okay. So certainly keep an eye on that as well. The Kiwi itself has not made new lower lows as of yet, so certainly showing immense strength on the Kiwi. And looking to potentially push higher as well okay so all eyes on the uh, on the kiwi okay now the shanghai overnight still holding consolidating and actually finished positive for the day so that it's in and of itself is a con con considered to be a bullish sign the nikkei certainly finished weak although it hasn't updated on my charts as of yet now the uh, s p 500 yesterday still consolidating at that 200 ma didn't actually show over uh, an extreme weakness if anything, it consolidated and it's now looking to potentially target that gap fill at 2044. So that will be the next target on the S&P 500, okay? Especially given the fact that it took out this previous support, previous support equals resistance at the 2006 level. And given the ECB's QE and the BOJ potentially talking up stimulus and talking about more further negative rates, they should certainly send the foot to the S&P certainly higher, especially given the Shanghai obviously close fat now the oil price is certainly into support again that will certainly support uh, equity markets given the fact that oil is into support and you are looking for potentially move a move higher okay so going over to the german dax watch out for that gap fill once we reach that gap fill that's a uh, 99 90 10 000, potentially even thrust higher uh, the most important factor from my perspective is that the uh, the german dax on the daily chart certainly took out that previous topping tail so there's certainly room to move higher up to the 10 200 region and again that would more than likely coincide with the s p reaching that uh, that key level at uh, 2040 region okay going over to the uh, cac now let's bring up the cac let's see exactly how it's trading it's just consolidating at the moment we do have uh, a uh, uh unfilled gap above so that potential gap will be targeted watch out for that potential gap now if i just take the uh, trend line connect it across watch out for this diagonal trend line as well and obviously like i said gap fill Given the fact that the EURUSD is still languishing now, currently still falling, 1.1075 uh, on the EURUSD now. Okay, that's going to lift European equities and is actually going to be considered bullish for European equities. Okay, the FTSE 100, even with the stronger dollar this morning, I mean, if I just bring up the chart of the dollar, very, very impressive, uh, the FTSE 100. Uh, even though the miners are obviously under the cosh, uh, certainly weak. Uh, and as you can see here in the daily chart dollar index certainly appreciating 60 minute dot the dollar index now is potentially into resistance previous support equals resistance okay now uh, dollar index obviously appreciating and the FTSE hasn't fallen as much and therefore once the dollar starts to retreat and then the FTSE will certainly uh, certainly start to benefit even more okay so bear that in mind so daily chart at the moment small consolidation 60 minute chart you have this bear flag pivot low was 6114 okay i did actually exit that trade a bit too early on my position long but for now you do have got obviously bearish consolidation that's something that you need to take into consideration but the 10 minute chart certainly looks like it wants to uh, well more than likely have built a base here held its support zone and now looking to potentially press higher and test that for 6150 6160 6170 zone again so again certainly take that into consideration as well from uh, from a from FTSE 100's perspective okay again all eyes on the euro usd given the fact that it's collapsing it should help risk 
uh, to a large extent. If I bring up the yen or the USDJPY, actually, if I just bring up the chart, the USDJPY, it is actually coming into support, so that should help risk sentiment overall. If I go to a 60-minute chart, you can see that it's at a double bottom. It's putting a bullish engulfing candle and now wants to potentially push higher. So again, that certainly is a bullish argument, and uh, that could send the, uh, or more than likely will send the uh, the actual uh, uh, equity markets higher to a large extent as well. Okay, so in terms of um, uh, news flow, going into the um, the actual, I mean, we've said employment change out, by the way, as well. Uh, employment data out, the Eurozone certainly better, okay. Uh, came in stronger than expected, so again, that should help the Euros, Euro, European equities. We do have uh, New York data. You have uh, a New York Stem Empire State retail sales will be very, very, very important, very crucial, and that will certainly help us in terms of the dollar uh, movements. Uh, producer prices again very important. Red Book as well important. Housing data as well important, and we also have the dairy auction out later on today from with regards to the Kiwi. So all eyes on that as well. Okay, folks, I think that's a market wrap. Uh, the markets or the the uh, the European indices certainly have factored in uh, majority of the bearish news now, and certainly are provided the Euro USD remains below that 1.11 level. Bias is towards the upside in terms of uh, momentum, and uh, a risk on uh, bias will prevail given the uh, QE backdrop. Okay, folks, I think that's a, a wrap. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.